All right, ladies and gentlemen, boils and ghouls, it's time to talk about my favorite zombie movie of all time. Now, I always say Day of the Dead is my second favorite zombie film of all time, but it's my favorite traditional zombie movie. Like your traditional Romero type zombies, Day of the Dead is the pinnacle for me. I mean, night is right underneath it, but Day of the Dead, all the way, all the time, every day, will always be of the dead for me. But this is a movie that is so much more than a zombie film. Like, this is just a full on splatter film in like Sam Raimi type fashion by the great Peter Jackson, who obviously went on to have an unreal amazing career with Lord of the Rings and King Kong and everything that Jackson's done and I have friends who have the same opinion and I, I, I feel the same way like if we can just have one more film like this from Jackson with all the money he has he can just say fuck you to any studio he can do it himself and let's get one more crazy off the rails splatter film from Jackson before he passes and whenever he does which hopefully is a while from now. So we are, of course, talking 1992's Dead Alive, or that's the title I always knew it as, and that's, I'm pretty sure it's an American title. Brain Dead, it's known in the UK and other regions. But when I was, used to go to Blockbuster, and this was one of those covers that always intrigued me from the very beginning. Like, we talk about in this community a lot about like VHS covers and going to the video store and what caught our, caught our eyes the most this movie just with the, the girl spreading her mouth open with the skeleton face inside of it I'll never forget seeing this on the shelves at Blockbuster when I was a kid and I didn't see this until years later like maybe my early teens or so and was just disgusted, blown away, just <laughs> the practical effects in this movie, as you all know how much I love practical effects, are so fucking good, and there's such an abundance of them, there is so much effects in this movie, like, it is unreal, it's just a practical effects extravaganza, the entire film, and just, there are scenes in this movie that disgust me, that, like, I really can't look at. Like, I don't get me wrong. I know how sick of a movie this is. But, oh, it's so goddamn good, man. It just puts me in a giddy mood. I don't even know what's going on half the time with this movie. Like, this isn't a film, even though it's my favorite, like, zombie movie. And I, that's why I, I mentioned Day of the Dead. Because this is not your traditional zombie film. At all. Like, this is just a, a, in a league of its own. <laughs> this is, like... All by itself, brain dead and dead alive. I, whatever the fuck you want to call it, it's it's just masterfully done. And this had a, I want to say, if I remember correctly, I just read it like five minutes ago, a $3 million budget, not a dime was wasted here. Not a dime. Like, I can't, I can't even imagine how much all the practical effects cost. Like, just to do all the effects in this movie, I couldn't imagine it had to be a decent chunk of that that three million then but not a dime of that budget went to waste here and just everything is thrown at the wall <laughs> and most of it if not all of it for me just sticks and it's just this is just such an insane movie it makes you feel like you're losing your goddamn mind when you're watching this film and just the camera work too by J that jackson has in this movie that I don't know what else to call it, but like, because I'm not, a, I'm not a camera guy. So, but it's like, it's like a fishbowl lens, like sh camera shots that he uses in this that really makes it look twisted and makes it look like, like just so surreal and out there, and like you feel like the madness that Lionel goes through <laughs> dealing with the zombies and shit in this movie. Just though, I love the camera work in this movie. It's fantastic just like everything else so let's talk dead alive from 1992 oh, i love this film and yes the reason this is finally coming out is because i was watching uh karen from ocean chicks flicks definitely check our channel out subscribe if you're not 
awesome, awesome person with great content. And she had a stream interviewing some good friends of mine. <laughs> they had on Dave, Savage Zombie Reviews, Video Tasties, Gareth, um, Boss from Har Lives Matter. Awesome. And they brought in Ricky from uh, Old As Fuck Reviews. And they brought up this movie. And Dave and Gareth, I love you, but the pussies you are that you can't deal with this movie. <laughs> Ricky, you're the man. This movie is fantastic. And hearing that, uh, then, like, I've wanted to do this movie for a while, like, since the zombie theme in January. And I just didn't get around to this. And once I heard that whole conversation, I was like, all right, it has to get done now. So <laughs> this is for you guys. Now, just for clarity, there are a few different cuts out there in this movie. I'm watching it. It is on YouTube. You can watch it free on YouTube. It's uploaded a few times. This is the, I believe, the most uncut one, the uh, hour and 43 minute and change one. So this is the uncut version in full because there's no other way to watch this movie. And just the fact that it's filmed in New Zealand, just like so many other films that we've seen filmed there, it just ups the production value immediately because it just it's gorgeous. And I love the fact that we're in 1967 on Skull Island and decades later he would film, you know, King Kong and stuff and go back to Skull Island and everything. That's cool. The, the leader looking dude, like with the crazy paint and the bones and shit like a, a, for a hat. <laughs> He's fucking intimidating, man. I'd be so afraid of these people, these aborigine type tribe tribal members. Terrifying. I'd get the hell out of there so fast. And let's talk about the score, man. I mean, this should have been an honorable mention for the video I just did on my top ten horror scores. I completely forget about the score every time until I rewatch it. Just the dun 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 like the the just it's it's so good, man. Just the descending uh, notes like that. It's its so effective and it's used great throughout this entire film. And he takes the rat monkey thing off of Skull Island and it just leads to the most insane... This is probably the most insane movie I've ever seen. Like, it's up there for sure. Maybe the top five. For sure the top five. Maybe top three. This is one insane movie. And I don't think we've ever seen a movie like this since. Unless someone was really trying to emulate Jackson. This is just fantastic. So he gets bit by the rat monkey thing. And it's interesting, this cut does open up with uh, Brain Dead as the uh, title. So this is the UK cut. Shut the fuck up, phone. I'm trying to do shit. So, <laughs> let's talk about the gore in this movie. Just from the opening scene there, when he, after he gets bit and they chop his arms off, and then they hit him right in the face with the cleaver thing, whatever it is, and then just the blood splatters with the title card. The gore in this movie is just unbelievable. And it looks great. Of course it looks over the top. Like, it, it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's so over the top. There is so much, like, you talk about Sam Raimi, like, in Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, with just excess of everything. This is excess to, like, the hundredth power. There is so much blood in this movie. There is so much gore in this movie. There's so much fluid being... <laughs> fucking sloshed around, thrown around, squirted, everything. <laughs> this The gore is fantastic. But like I said, you can't like look at it any other way than the way that it is, that it's just completely over the top. It's not supposed to look ultra-realistic or anything like that, and it doesn't. It looks like late 80s effects, practical effects. But God, it's so well done. All of it. Every single effect in this movie is just fantastic. And Lionel is just a great character. He's just like the perfect, like, everyman. And Paquita. Who doesn't love fucking Paquita? I mean, I'm sure people love fucking her, but I'm saying, like, who doesn't fucking love Paquita? Like, such a cute woman. Such a cool character. And I love their whole little romance. Her grandma, whatever, the old bitch, she's fucking scary, man. <laughs> Like, she's scary. I mean, if that's her mom, she's way old. I never knew that, like, if it was a mom. It's got to be a grandma, because this bitch is fucking old. It is not Rocha. 
when she's doing the tarot card reading and stuff. That's a cool scene. And I love Lionel and Paquita's whole first interaction, like right after that tarot card reading. And he's just so clumsy, but he's such a well-meaning guy. Like, how do you not love it immediately? And then just the, the over-the-top romantic music that plays and they're staring at each other. Like, it's so great. So great, in fact, that he's just like fucking bumping into stuff and produce is falling on the ground as he's backing out. Like, it's, it's, it's sweet. And he's ready to like walk into traffic in a, in a sack. Like, <laughs> I love it. It's such a such a great scene. First meeting between them. I love her, his, Lionel's mom too. Like, I forget the woman who plays her. Awesome performance. Like, she, she, I just love the dynamic between them. The the mother son relationship between uh, Lionel and what is it? Vera is that her name? I think it's Vera, if I recall correctly. I love it. Like, and when she finally, like, turns into a zombie and just, ev oh, we have so much to talk about here. Actually, Lionel's mom, whoever the fuck your name is, <laughs> pretty sure it's Vera. The front, like, when she points out, like, does that look like a nicely kept uh, front landscape or whatever? It actually, the, the lawn looks fine. It, look, it looks very nice. Like, she, I think she's being a little overbearing there, which she is, but <laughs> the, the lawn, he did not have to run out there and start lawn mowing and shit. Like, it looked totally fine. And I love the whole, like, little bit of language barrier between them, uh, Lionel and Paquita. <laughs> How he's trying to explain a zoo, and he's just like, you know, animals, cages. And she's like, ah, yeah, like, I want to go to zoo. And just the whole little bit of learning that they have to do <laughs> with each other. It's adorable, man. Like, this, ah. That is a gorgeous lion, too. <laughs> At the zoo? Awesome. I, what a beautiful animal, man. And and I love the claymation uh, stop motion and shit for the uh, rat monkey. <laughs> like it, 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 of course it looks so dated and stuff, but it fits the movie so well. And I, I love how that looks. It's kind of like an Evil Dead with the disintegration scene, the stop motion, and that it it feels a little out of place, but not in the context of the whole film. Like, same thing here. I love it. And Lionel's mom gets bit by the rat monkey. I've always called it a rat monkey. Is that what it is? I'm pretty sure. And that's what I've always referred to it as. When he gets his head squished in, that looks fantastic, man. Like, the event that he, the other guy steps on his head, blood's coming out, the eyes are, like, popping out a bit. All of that looks so great. Like, there's so much effects that we're talking about here that it's just unreal. And like I said, with the camera work, besides, like, the fishbowl, lens type uh, shots I love the quick pan in shots and like the the Dutch angles and everything that just makes you f just so immersed in this movie and just like I said as crazy as it as it progresses it just makes it look the film just looks demented <laughs> and it, it it's it's done so well here and it's not even just like the, the crazy blood parts and stuff and killing the zombies later and the famous uh, lawnmower scene and stuff with the blade and the lawnmower blade and stuff, propeller, whatever the fuck it is. It's all the little things, too. Like I said, like just now with the, with the rat monkey getting his head squished and then just the bite wound on the mom the next morning and just how, how it's like pulsating. It's all the little effects that add up in this film. It's just, it's astonishing to me. It really is how they pulled this off. I mean, yeah, $3 million budget. That's a decent chunk of change. It's a nice budget. But I don't know, man. It's just, it's its so just creative, this movie. It's like you never see a film like this. Same as I just uh, talked about uh, Santa Sangre. You'll never see a movie like that. This is the same type of thing. This is it's in a league of its own, and there's no film like like Dead Alive. <laughs> there, there really isn't. I love when her skin's peeling on the side, and he goes and gets fucking glue, and just pats fucking glue all over it, and pushes it back up. <laughs> That's hilarious. The comedy in this movie, too, is just absolutely fantastic. Like, there are so many funny moments in this movie, too. It has everything. This is why it's my favorite zombie film. It's, it's like Day of the Dead, second... It's so serious compared to compared to this. Like it's so serious. This is why this gets the edge for me. 
because this is just so much fun. There's hysterical parts. There's disgusting parts. The the scene coming up with the um the pudding the, the, with the fucking pus that shoots into it. That's a scene I can't. I gotta look away. I can watch all the gore in the world, people's heads chopped off, cutting pieces, everything like that. I I trauma. You know, I'm a Fulci, huge Fulci fan. All of that's fine. The pus, <laughs> and then he goes and eats it. I can't. I can't. It's so gross. It is so gross. And that's how well done the effect is because it it really grosses you out because it looks so not realistic, but it looks so over the top that it. But you're seeing it happen in front of you, so it's just the implication of it. It. Oh, I love this movie. And this motherfucker don't look down before he puts a spoon into his pudding and you don't see the blood, like, mixed with the pus when he... <laughs> Yo, come on, man. Like, this is... <laughs> when I rewatch this now, I'm never taking my eye off food again around anybody. <laughs> just in case. Never. I am looking down before I take a spoonful of anything just to make sure this is... Oh, I can't look at this. It's so gross. As unbelievable as this movie is, and out there, it's so over the top. Maybe the most unbelievable thing is that that woman didn't puke immediately <laughs> next to the mob, eating the shit coming off of her. She was able to get up and walk out of the room to go puke? Bullshit. <laughs> that is complete bullshit. I would have been spewing vomit at the table. Like, you know that scene from Family Guy, when it used to be good? When... <laughs> They all start puking, and then they're watching each other puke, and they're puking more. That would be that scene if I was involved. This is so small of a detail, but I love it. When Paquita comes to Lionel's house and warns him and says that there's dark forces coming against you and stuff, there's a shot of Lionel, and then just the dog that goes up the stairs... I don't know why, man. I, I love that. I love just seeing that dog just randomly go up the staircase... I don't know, <laughs> pulling the dog out of her mouth, the mom's mouth, and and, and all the blood and shit on the sh on the sheets right next to her on her bed, right before she attacks Paquita. That what a great effect that is, pulling the dog out of her mouth, and 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 just in the excess that this film is, everything to the excess. That's how that scene is. That effect, it's just you. It's like. Just pulled the whole thing out already. <laughs> like it, it's like uh, a clown pulling um, the flags and shit like out of someone's mouth, at their own mouth. It's like when does it end? <laughs> it just keeps going. The dog's body is so mangled and so long. <laughs> oh, it's fantastically done. The scene when uh, the mom's attacking Lionel and Paquita's upstairs asking, screaming about her toothbrush. <laughs> What a great scene, too. And this will surprise some people, like, how much I love this movie, that I'm not a big Peter Jackson fan. <laughs> Outside of this and Bad Taste. I, I think I saw Meet the Feebles once. I, I don't remember it. Like, I, I don't remember caring much for it. That's, and that's actually worth a rewatch. I'll watch that sometime soon. But I'm not a big Lord of the Rings guy. And I'm not a big King Kong person and stuff. And everything else he's made, really. I, I'm not a big Jackson fan. For me, this is his best film, but would I say it's his best made movie? Of course not. I mean, maybe with all the, just with the budget and all the work that went into it, maybe his best work in a movie. But I mean, like if you just looking at the cinematography and everything about the Lord of the Rings trilogy and, and King Kong and everything like that, of course, it's so much higher quality and of course, it's so much better looking. But this is my favorite movie by him. The veterinarian is such a fucking out there character, man. Just the way he talks with the, the crazy monocle on his eye. He's so insane. When uh, Lionel puts the big ass trank needle in the woman's eye in the basement and the guttural sound that she makes, that sounds so cool. <laughs> like the sound design is great in this too. It's not fed, it's not excellent, but pretty goddamn good, man. Nice little Fulci-esque uh, zoom in on the eyes shots during the uh, seance with Paquita's grandma with Lionel and saying death surrounds him and stuff. Looks excellent. And the whole zombie of the mom, man. <laughs> the way that she looks and the way she walks and the car hits her and she flies through the, uh, the, the store window or the door, whatever. Looks fantastic. 
And this is only like, what, 45 minutes into this movie? And already the effects are just amazing. Seeing this movie for the first time, if you haven't seen this, when you see this movie for the first time, you have no idea what's awaiting you, like, in the last 45 minutes of this movie. Like, it is so over the top, as I've said, but, like, Jesus, man, it's so fun. It's so amazing. And <laughs> Lionel's uncle, what a big character he is, like, both literally and just his character, his personality and stuff. He's a great character, too. Like, just this scene alone, dude. Like, oh, this movie makes me so giddy. With the, with Lionel and his mom's corpse and shit. And then just the two guys come in and the formaldehyde, the green shit, just starts shooting out of her eyeballs and her mouth. And it's shooting everywhere. It's so much. There's such an excess. The eyes are popping out. What a great effect, man. I reckon he's one of the guys who loots corpses. I love the whole scene in the graveyard with the, the greasers and stuff. The mood and the atmosphere in the scene is great. Like, it, it, it seems like you're in this graveyard with them. Like, feels great, looks great. Awesome scene. <laughs> dude, the, the blonde haired uh, greaser. I guess that's contradictory, but the one in the group with the when the other guy's body get launched at him, and the effect looks great with his chest with his ribs exposed and everything, and he looks at him, his scream is hilarious. Oh, that's so funny. And now is when this turns into just a zombie fest. Now we got three more corpses that are alive here, and they look fantastic. Like, I love how it's not your traditional zombie in this, like, I've said before, like the 28 Days movies, I don't care for them. I don't like, like, fast-moving zombies, really. And these are pretty fast. They're not, like, slow, retarded Romero ones. <laughs> but this is, like, the perfect speed for me and the perfect type of out-there zombie. Like, 28 Days Later and 20, 20 Weeks Later, they're, they're too fast for me. This is perfect. Like, they... <laughs> And just the choreography with, like, the, what is he, a priest or, like, something like that. The guy in the velvet robe. And he's beating the shit out of all the zombies. It's fantastic. I love the food that Lionel makes. And he just put, there's just a big clear bottle with a label tranquilizer. And he's pouring it into the food. That's absolutely hysterical. Actually, I just noticed that this movie and Day of the Dead have a link for me. That there are... Both, both films have instances of zombies trying to be domesticated <laughs> in day and in this. <laughs> the, the lips melding together effect, and then it, it just rips off. It looks fucking amazing. And it, yeah, it's, you can tell it's inspired by society uh, from Brian Yuzna. The, the shunting scene at the end, it's very similar to that, but it looks amazing nonetheless. Oh, and Lionel breaks it off with Paquito. I can feel her pain. I don't know why I said it like that. And he's carrying another clear thing labeled tranquilizer on it. <laughs> That's fucking funny. All right, the baby. <laughs> and, and the whole scene in the park, in a bit, with the baby. And all the, the just craziness and debauchery that goes on in that scene is one of the most out there, off the wall scene in a film for me. Like, what a crazy lunatic Peter Jackson has to be to write something like this and to film this. And the effects with the baby look fucking great, man. Like, they don't look bad. They look really goddamn good still. And I love, again, like, how, how he was trying to domesticate his mom and the other zombies. That he's trying to take care of the zombie baby. And, uh, and when he goes sliding down the hill chasing after the, um, the, uh... Oh, why can't I think of a god baby stroller <laughs> or whatever with the baby in it? And he goes launching through the air. Oh, this is so good. I'll tell you one thing. Like I always say, Dave, you too. Punt the living fuck out of the zombie baby. <laughs> Punt him so far and high into the air that you never see him again. He'll go flying into space. Jack Daniels down the throat of the zombie. <laughs> That's great. That's my drink. So. I love that they represent it here. I love the lighting in the basement when Paquita goes down there and she gets attacked by the zombie. That's so great. And then the, the rake to his head. <laughs> I'm going to have to just like skip over a lot of effects here because this will take forever. But 
I'll highlight some of my favorites like in the last 45 minutes here because this is just a, a smorgasbord of amazing effects for the rest of this movie. And then Lionel's uncle and he has like the party with the people there and he blackmailed uh, Lionel for his mom's money. I, the fact that he goes to try to rape uh, Paquita, fuck you, Uncle Lee. I'm pretty sure his name's Lee. <laughs> I'm pretty damn sure. But I, I hate that character. Like I said, great big personality, but eh, I don't care for him and I want to see what happens to him. All right, effects time. The guy getting his uh, rib cage ripped out. That's fantastic. The face rip, the skin ripped off the guy's face, and you see this, the muscle and the skeleton. Perfect. His uncle pulling the teeth out. That's hard to watch. That too. <laughs> that is like, oh, man. It looks good, though. The zombie coming through the door, and his body rips in half and jumps at Lionel. One of my favorite effects in the movie. That and the light bulb zombie scene. <laughs> And the hedge clippers, the hedge clippers that just cut the guy's head right here. That looks fantastic, too. Those three best effects in the movie. <laughs> the baby puking on Paquita in the blender, and then he hops up and <laughs> holds onto the light and is laughing. She punches his ass through the window. And the, the vomit is so gross, but like the rest of it's hysterical. And it's, <laughs> it's so funny because, again, it doesn't matter how ridiculous this movie is because obviously the kid the baby is is somebody in a suit in certain shots you can tell uh, and, but it doesn't matter it looks so good and god i love it. the light bulb effect <laughs> when it's lighting up her face and shit that is just brilliant what a great idea one of my favorite shots in this movie when uh the uncle is has the uh, the knives and shit, and he's just like hacking away and stuff. The way it's shot is perfect. I love that. I love those shots so much. And just this whole iconic scene, man. And the the half head <laughs> looks so good. It looks so good sliding across the floor when Lionel opens it with the lawnmower blade and stuff. And then there is so much blood and body parts flying everywhere. <laughs> There is, this is one of the most excessive, like, scenes in a film. Like, maybe the most. Like, this is just so much of everything. And it, it, it's really, like, overwhelming. The first time you see this, it blows you away. Like, what the fuck am I watching right now? How did this get made? And thank God it did. Because this, mil this movie is fucking brilliant. See, like, this is how Evil Dead Rise should have ended, with the chainsaw in the finale. Like, the amazing one in the 2013 remake. This is how it should have been. <laughs> should have been insane to the membrane, in the membrane. Fuck you. And for those of you who haven't seen this, like, when I say blood, I mean blood. Like, there is blood everywhere. <laughs> All over the place. You probably haven't seen this much fake blood in a movie in one place, in a scene, anywhere else. Like, that's how much blood and guts is in this scene. I love the color palette and the shot of Lionel and Paquita trembling in fear when they see the mom at the top of the staircase when she's fucking huge now for some reason. I love those shots and the colors used. Brilliant. And all the creature work and makeup and stuff for the mom at the end. The giant fucking creature she becomes it looks so good like what great work man i know I've, i'm talking so heavily on the effects but that's the type of film this is like you can't not this is like the biggest talking point for this movie is the practical effects and the gore and stuff less that's his fucking name i don't know why i was calling him lee the uncle but then just after all this insanity, the fire breaks out and stuff, and then people are all gathering around. Paquita and Lionel get to finally just share a nice kiss covered in blood. Like, they weren't, like, concerned about AIDS or no shit like this. Fucking like in 92, they should have, but they weren't. So, and then they walk off, and it ends. Just my favorite zombie film. Just a masterpiece. Of, of filmmaking, of independent filmmaking, the, of practical effects work, of just having an insane vision and being able to bring it to life so insanely and intensely. And just to, to, to get this on screen and to get this made was a feat in itself.
So that's Dead Alive, aka Bren, 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 Brendan. Brendan. <laughs> it's Brendan now. Brain Dead from '92. Peter Jackson, my favorite film of his. Like I said, so good. And finally, great to talk about it. And yeah, Gareth, uh, Dave, we'll, we'll be rubbing in your face, me and Ricky, when we uh, do that stream because this movie is brilliant. Take care, guys. Mm-hmm.